I've just upgraded my 16 inch MacBook Pro 2019 to the top spec 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max so I can edit and process YouTube films faster. And the burning question is, was it worth it? I've always thought that when you buy a computer, the best thing is always to buy the most high powered machine you can possibly afford. Because even if you don't need the computing power right now, you probably will in a couple of years as the software we run on these things becomes ever more complex. That strategy has worked pretty well for me. In 2013, I bought a top spec MacBook Pro, which was enough to run the International Space Station back then. It cost £2,300 and it lasted six years. Then it did a stint as my daughter's school computer before I finally gave it to my wife. So it now spends its retirement browsing the online catalogue at Zara.com. But it's still soldiering on, eight years later. It doesn't shut like it once did, but that's okay. Then, only two years ago, I bought another 16-inch MacBook Pro. This time with a 2.4 GHz 8-core Intel i9 chip. This time with 32 RAMs in the paddock and the top-spec graphics card. It cost 3,800 of Her Majesty's finest notes, but I thought it would probably see me through to my retirement. But then... A couple of weeks ago, Apple launched the new 2021 14 and 16 inch models. Predictably, the launch event was a carpet bombing of frenzied hyperbole. M1 is a breakthrough. Groundbreaking, amazing, extraordinary, unbelievable, phenomenal, amazing, truly special. Breakthrough, it's just awesome. Still, Apple does have form for that kind of thing. And usually you need to take it all with a very large pinch of salt. When they say, it's the best ever, what they actually mean is that it's a tiny little bit better than last year's. But this year, things are a little different. This year, Apple stopped buying the chips used to run these things from Intel and instead started to design and build its own, called the M1, which are structurally different and much faster and more power efficient. Now the thing is, computer power is measured in lots of different ways, none of which translate into anything related to real life. For example, they say that these new M1 chips offer twice the CPU performance and up to four times faster graphics performance than my last MacBook. They say that the M1 Pro has 200 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth which I think I'm right in saying is more than 10 times more bandwidth than my 2019 model. And the Max has double that again. But so what? What does this mean in real life? I mean, I assume a faster machine means I'm gonna get stuff done faster, but how much faster? Well, over four times graphics performance is a lot. So I decided to take a punt. I took myself down to the Apple store where I ignored the assistant who pleaded with me not to buy the top spec model. You don't need that much computer power, sir. Not for browsing soft porn. Anyway, here it is. The M1 Max with 64 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of storage. It cost me just shy of £4,000, but Apple gave me £830 against the old one, and I can claim the VAT back. So actually, it cost me £2,500 to upgrade. Now, I've now had it a few days, and the question is, was it worth it? Well, as usual, there are a raft of improvements. This thing has a markedly improved screen with a 120Hz refresh rate, which means everything moves more fluidly. The charger is now MagSafe again, which means you can trip up over the charging cable without sending your laptop flying. The battery lasts significantly longer, up from 11 to 17 hours. There's now an HDMI socket and a memory card reader on the side here. The sound quality has been improved and the headphone jack can now power higher impedance headphones. Oh, and there's a better quality webcam and the keyboard's black. And the F keys are back. 
All these things are nice, but they're not individually or even collectively a reason to upgrade. Particularly for me, because 99% of the time I plug mine into a much bigger monitor, close it up and sit it on the floor, where I get no benefit whatsoever from a better screen or a keyboard or any of that stuff. But that wasn't why I took the punt. The reason I took the punt is because Apple has upgraded the engine. And my God, this isn't just a small upgrade. This is like climbing out of a Fiat Panda and jumping straight into Thrust SSC. You notice it immediately you start using it. Everything is more responsive. Apps open almost instantaneously, mostly within a second, sometimes two. That spinning beach ball of death you used to get when your Mac was thinking about something is pretty much a thing of the past. But for most people, even professionals, that responsiveness is another nice to have and not a reason to go and blow four grand on a computer. There is, though, one group of people in particular for whom this added horsepower makes a lot of difference. And that's anyone, like me, who uses a computer to make large amounts of video content. I made my last film using my 2019 MacBook Pro. It took around 10 minutes to process it, ready to upload to YouTube. After I bought this new model, I used it to process the same film. And guess how long it took? Just over four minutes. That's staggering, more than twice as fast. And not only that, I found I can keep using the computer whilst it processes the film, which was not the case with my last machine, which slowed down to a crawl. And that means I'm saving 10 minutes every time I make a short film. When I make longer ones or 4K films, I'll probably save even more. Now, the last time I worked for someone else, uh, which was some time ago, I seem to remember that my time was charged at about £150 an hour. So by my calculation, this upgrade is going to pay for itself in time saved in under a year. Now there's a lot of discussion on YouTube about the choices you have when you buy one of these things. 14 inch or 16 inch? Well that's simple, you can spec both machines to have more or less exactly the same computing power. So the screen size is down to... Uh, whether you use the screen much. If you do, go for the 16-incher. But if, like me, you mostly hook your laptop up to an external monitor, then you'll appreciate the smaller form factor of the 14-inch when you travel. As for the storage, the chip, and how many RAMs, there's about £2,000 between the base model and the top-spec 14-inch machine. Except the base model only comes with 500 gigabytes of storage, and I don't think that's enough for content creators these days. If you're making films, you probably want to start by looking at the 2 terabyte model, which is another £600. Likewise, if you run multiple applications simultaneously, including video editing software, you probably want to start at about 32 gigabytes of RAM. And if you do get the 64 gigabytes, then you can have every single application on your computer running simultaneously, and it still won't break into a sweat. Excluding tax, which I claim back, there's about £900 then between the lowest spec I would have looked at and the one I actually ended up buying. But I'm banking on the fact that the higher spec machine really will last me six years, and whilst right now it is a bit like buying a Bugatti Veyron to drive around Knightsbridge, I've got the reassurance of knowing that it's got enough grunt to handle anything I might throw at it in the next six years, and one or two things I can't even think of yet. If you know anyone who's thinking about buying a MacBook, you might like to share this with them. Otherwise, till the next time, I've been Arlo Guthrie. Bye-bye.